State is 2-1. and one. Their last game was back on December 5th when they lost to Purdue by 12 in the finals of the Purdue Boilermaker Classic. They are 2-1 and one on the year. Kansas is 5-0, and oh, and they have beaten, as we mentioned, Indiana on the road. They won here over Georgia. Here are the starting lineups for East Tennessee State. The north side starting lineups at guard Eric Palmer, number five. Jason Niblett, number three, at a guard spot. He is a senior. He's the point guard. Tony Patterson will be at the uh, center position rather than uh, Darrell Brown. Trizel Silvers also will be there at, number, at a forward spot, number 21, and number 30, Jerry Pelfrey, also there. For Kansas, their starting five looks this way. Rex Walters is a guard, a great shooter, a left-hander. Adonis Jordan, one of the top point guards in the country. Eric Pauley, the big man, 6'10", a senior at center. Derek Hancock, number 32, at a forward. And Richard Scott leads the team in scoring, averaging just under 13 points a game, also in there. The Buccaneers tonight dressed in navy and gold, trimmed in white, and of course Kansas in the white with navy and crimson trim. There's Alan LaForce, Norm Sloan, a good buddy of ours and a great basketball coach. Well, I've known Alan for years. He's one of the best, one of the best men in the business. Tipped up, controlled by Pauley, and here's Kansas with the basketball. Adonis Jordan leads the team offensively down low they go to scott no good but a foul it'll be against east tennessee state here in the opening moment that's a foul. kansas you know they are almost a mirror image of the unc tar heels randy and i've seen so much of that move where they you front the postman and they make that nice entry pass over the top scott at the free throw line only a 40 percent shooter it's still early in the year you look at his stats pretty good six rebounds a game just under 13 points Richard Scott, a 6'7 junior from Little Rock, misses the first of two shots. He'll get another. East Tennessee hadn't played a game in over two weeks. And Kansas takes a 1 0 lead. Kansas is out in the full court, man to man press, looking to double up the ball. That's, a, that's also another characteristic of the UNC program. Roy, having coached there for years, is running a mere program here. Give and go, the Pelfrey, the shot won't go. Kansas wanted a charge, but they get the ball back here. It goes out of bounds off the hands of East Tennessee. We're going to have to see Tennessee do a lot of the, of the backdoor stuff, Randy, because they're going to be overplaying those guys and pressuring that outside range. There's a look at Roy Williams in his fifth season coaching here at Kansas, National Coach of the Year a year ago. A lot of talent here. Scott with the ball, East Tennessee in a man-to-man. -man. Jordan dogged by Palmer, down low to Pauley. Yes. Pauley with a baseline jumper, 3-0 Jayhawk. It's going to be a big problem. The, the Bucks were doing a great job of perimeter defense then, but they got hurt on the inside. Niblett in trouble, looks to Pelfrey on the left. Niblett out high, Kansas in a good job defensively. Trezell Silvers drives that baseline. One-hander won't go. Darrell Jones going to be hit with a personal foul. Over the back of Richard Scott. Another thing, I think Trezell's going to have to have a big ball game. They put a lot of pressure on him. Then there was a lot of bumping of him when he went up for that shot. Here we have Niblett with the ball out top. Dribbling around, coming off the pick. Now we'll go back to live action. We'll check out a replay again in a minute. East Tennessee down 3-0. Jordan, it's Hancock, shot won't go, and the rebound taken away by Darrell Jones with East Tennessee State, 6'9", junior. Buccaneers lost it out of bounds, and Kansas gets the ball. They got out in great shape, though, Randy. They almost had a layup. They just, Kansas just did get a hand on the pass. Well, they say it went off the hands of Kansas, so they will give it at two East Tennessee State. Inbounds it comes, Darrell Jones walks. Four mistakes. Buccaneers not been able to score and we have played almost a minute a little over a minute and a half 1828 to go first half you know, i don't think that the bucks are looking that bad though randy i kind of like the way they're looking out there they're very quick on defense nice entry pass in just got bumped and shuffled his feet they back off hancock as he has the ball in the left wing here's jordan jumper good have it the foul will be against Eric Palmer of East Tennessee. Well, you're looking at Adonis Jordan on that. He's 
They pass the bat, swing the ball around on their secondary break like they do so well, and, it, and Jordan knocks it down. Great player, quick, excellent shooter. Jordan has a chance for a three-point play and a chance to give Kansas a six-zip lead here early. If he makes this, and he does, it is his 1,000th point career-wise at, at Kansas University. Quite a career for Adonis Jordan. Bucks run with it. Look for that three. Pelfrey or take it. Too hard. Long rebound comes to Rex Walter. Here's Jordan. The foul will be against Jerry Pelfrey, and Kansas is out to an 8 nothing lead. Here you come. You've got Rex Walters giving the nice lead pass down the floor. There's Adonis, very quick player, going in for the layup. Basket, and he's fouled. This is the very thing that Coach LaForce didn't want to have happen. Here's a 1,000-point club. <laughs> Adonis Jordan now in there. Darnell Valentine, Cedric Hunter, Kevin Pritchard, they're the ones just ahead of him. In. Assists, steals, points. He has six in this game. Kansas has nine, and a 9 nothing lead. This is the kind of beginning that Coach LaForce didn't want to see. This is the worst thing that could happen. The Bucks are going to have to have a good break. They've got to get a shot to go down here quickly, Randy. There's the charge on Eric Palmer. That's his second foul, and that is a crucial foul on the Buccaneers because they have only eight players that are in this game. Here's Palmer on a drive, going up on the shot. I, you know, I, I don't like to comment on that play there. I, I have always thought that the guy that... Well, if the defensive player has a position underneath the basket and the man driving the bucket comes down after after laying the ball up and hits him, how can you call that a foul on the offense? I just think that's, that's something that needs to be changed in the rules. Anyway, there's a steal. Bucks get a big break here. Pelfrey forces the turnover. Here comes East Tennessee down 9-0. Andy Pennington's checked into the game, the freshman for Eric Palmer, who got his second foul a moment ago. Darrell Jones into the lane. Silvers is open. Missed it. East Tennessee can't buy one. Now that's the kind of thing that has to start happening for them on the positive side. Excellent ball movement. Wide open shot, and it just didn't go down. Off the off the foot of Trezell Silvers. It will be given to Kansas. Hancock comes out into the game. Steve Woodbury, 6'4 junior from Wichita, not far away from here. 9 0 Kansas with the lead. Baseline shot with a jam. 11 0 Kansas. They're awfully good at getting that ball inside, and everybody that's on the basketball team is capable of working down in there, Randy. Adonis Jordan tries to pick Niblet's pocket, not good out of bounds. Bucks get it back on the side with. 39 seconds left on the shot clock. 16.54 to go. Well, I think the question's been answered, Randy, whether Kansas is going to come out flat or not. They certainly aren't. They're not, are they? Pennington with it. Pelfrey. they got to have some points from Pelfrey. Missed it again. Rebound kept alive. Darrell Jones. Get in. No good. Silvers. East Tennessee did a great job getting three or four shots, and they couldn't get one to fall. You know, I, I know this is going to sound strange, but on the offensive end of the floor, the Bucks are doing a good job. The ball just won't go down for them. 13 nothing. Pauley gets the layup. 16-21 to go. First half. Niblet. Jumper. No good. Rebound Pauley. Here they come again. Adonis Jordan with it now. Is three? Yeah. That's just a two. 15 to nothing. See, I, I don't. Time out. East Tennessee wants a time. They're down 15 nothing, and we'll be back in just a moment. Bucks are not off to a real good start, Coach. 15 nothing. Kansas, and they do look like the number two team in the country right now, don't they? And they look like the best team in the country right now, Randy. You know, I don't really think Coach LaForce wanted that timeout. He was in within one minute of a TV timeout. But a player called the timeout. Now, I understand that. The, the job right now that Buc the faces the Bucks is they got to keep their chin up. You know, this is an awesome start for Kansas, but it's a long ball game. Keep your chin up. That thing will start dropping for you in a little bit. Calvin Rayford is on Niblet. He's checked in, replacing Adonis Jordan. There's Jones. There's a foul away from the ball. Richard Scott guilty of the personal foul. 
will be the first foul on Kansas. East Tennessee will play it in now on the side with 15.54 to go here in the first half. 15-0, Kansas leads it. Kansas, 6 of 7 from the floor. Buccaneers 0 for 8. Look at the scoreboard and tell that. Tony Patterson comes into the lineup now for East Tennessee. There's Nibley with a 3. Missed it. Patterson got the rebound, and Rayford knocked it out of bounds. Well, I don't know whether you can tell it on TV or not, but sitting here at courtside, the quickness of Kansas is awesome. They not only are talented, they're very, very athletic and very quick. You would think East Tennessee would have had that advantage coming in if they had one, maybe a little quickness, but Kansas is every bit as quick as they are. Trizel Silver missed it. Woodbury with a rebound. He takes it the length of the floor and hits the jumper. 17 to nothing. Kansas now seven of eight. Well, they're off to an awesome start, and the Bucks just have to hang in there and fight their way through this thing. Playing one of the greatest teams, if not the best basketball team in the country, on their home court here, and they're playing inspired basketball. Real challenge for the Bucks. Silver's lost it off the hands of Richard Scott. Bucks get it back now, and coming back into the lineup now, or coming into the lineup is Sean Pearson. 6'4", sophomore from LaGrange Park, Illinois. You know, Randy, I'm, it, the offense of Kansas is awfully impressive, but I am impressed with their defense. They're just, they're just shutting everything down that the Bucks want to do and doing it with great quickness. Well, Trezell Silvers was standing on the inbounds line. That's another turnover for East Tennessee, and Kansas gets it back now. 15.03 to go first half. Kansas up 17 zip. Rayford out, Adonis Jordan back in now for Kansas, and here comes Eric Palmer. He's got two fouls, but you sit him out much longer, it's not going to do you any good anyway. He's a, averaging 15 points a game and hitting 58% of his three-point shots. Maybe he could ignite this team. Well, he can't help you sitting on the bench. You've got to run the risk of him picking up that third foul. He has to be in the ball. Paulie with the ball. Here's Pearson for three. Kansas is just tearing it up. They're eight of nine including a one three-pointer and it's 20 to nothing. Eric Palmer against Jordan. There's that trap. It's the, it's, the, it's the trap that is impossible to detect until all of a sudden it's on you. Now where does that come from? Well, I think... <laughs> There's Alan LaFord. Well, he, I tell you, he's kind of dumbfounded right now. Trying to figure out something to make his team get on the board. Well, I know how he feels over there. I'm in shock sitting here watching this whole thing. I, I don't know that I've ever seen a team get off such a hard stop before in my life. This, this is unreal. Palmer misses the three. Pauly with a dunk. A 6-10. It's 22 to nothing. Kansas 9 out of 10. Bucks 0 for 9. Pelfrey missed it, but a foul. And Pelfrey has a chance to get East Tennessee on the board if they give him a couple of free throws. Let's see. Well, he has a chance to break the ice. No, they're going to well, give call him. it a one-shot foul. Oh. Okay. Here he is. Fast break. Big man on the other team leading the break. That gives you another idea of just what the Bucks are contending with out there. Tony Patterson misses a couple of air balls in a row for the Bucks. They can't find it. 13.50. Here's Pearson again. Missed the shot. Kansas finally missed one, and here come the Bucks up the floor. Niblet for three. Swish. Now that's what that's what the Bucks need. They needed a miss here. Needed a basket on the other end. 22 to three. Six minutes and 20 seconds. East Tennessee went without a bucket. There's the lob, and Scott lost it out of bounds. Now you know there's a lot of time. 13.24. Some of these shots start to fall and Kansas starts to miss. 19-point lead can be made up very quickly. Randy, I was just getting ready to make that point. You got a long basketball game on your hands here. Here's Nib Nibbler. Watch him pull up and hit the three. Can't tell you how big a basket that was. That was needed badly. Not just for the points, but to break the ice and get him off the mark. Eric Palmer, there's that trap. Here it comes. He dribbles away from it. Pelfrey's open for three. Get it. Missed it. See that right there is what Eric handled that trap beautifully. 
And I anticipated that happening before the game. Started. They need that. Pearson got away for the easy snowbird. And it's 24 to 3. That lead 21 again by Kansas. Eric Palmer against Jordan. Palmer penetrates all the way, won't go. Pelfrey lost it, here comes Kansas. Three on two, Jordan. Boy, he makes it look easy, doesn't he? Yeah, he does. When, when the, and it is easy for them right now. It's very, everything's hard for the Bucks, and everything's coming very easy for Kansas. Andy Pennington with it, 12.23 to go. It's a 26 to three lead. There's the lob, Pelfrey's pass too high for Patterson. Jordan coming out of there with it. Stolen away, saved. Scott over Trizel Silvers. He finally got it. Richard Scott got the bucket, and it's 28 to 3. Well, that's another problem that the Bucks have. They do have a, they are outmanned on the boards, and right there was a classic example of it. They just kept the thing alive until they got it in the basket. 11.51 to go first half, 28 to 3. Palmer with it now, playing off that trap. Trezell Silvers pulls up, misses, and a foul. It'll be against who? You know, it, it's Kansas again. Uh, the Bucks executed extremely well after the quick trap out there. Got the ball, the open man, wide open shot. Shots aren't going down. Tony Patterson comes out of the ball game now. And so does Pennington checking back in Darrell Jones and also Trezell Silvers. Kansas is out rebound in East Tennessee, 12 to 5 in the first eight minutes or so of this ball game. We get a look at Rex Walters on the bench. Senior guard, a good one. For Roy Williams. Longtime assistant at North Carolina, coached there for 10 seasons. I believe he was there while you were at North Carolina State, wasn't he? He was there. Well. As a, yes, I've known Roy for a long time. He was an assistant coach there. And you could tell years ago that this man was in the right profession, going to be extremely successful at it. Patrick Ritchie, you see him checking in. He'll sit in, come in for Richard Scott as Kansas goes to the bench early. And why not? They're ahead 28-4. Trezell Silvers makes the first of two. He'll get another. <laughs> Missed it. Darrell Jones keeps it alive. Adam. Missed it again. Pauly with a rebound. Richie's the young man that was doubtful as a player tonight, and we saw yesterday in practice that he was going to play tonight and play at 100%. Oh, yeah. he, he worked very hard for two hours yesterday yes. to be doubtful, wasn't he? Yes. Woodbury on high with a basketball. Rayford. Makes the three, drives, goes over Silvers. Darrell Jones taps it to Silvers. Bucks run with it now. And Silvers lost it out of bounds. They're going to be a timeout on the floor. 11.08 to go first half. It has been all Kansas. They lead it 28 to 4. While we have a moment here, we want to remind you the announcers for this game have been contracted for and approved by East Tennessee State University. Any use rebroadcast or other transmission of this game without the written consent of East Tennessee State and Creative Productions is prohibited. 28 to 4, Buck fans wish that score were prohibited. As we look at a couple of young fans made signs, and boy, I bet they're out of school for the holidays and they're just here enjoying themselves. They're <laughs> having a ball. You know, I'm. Uh Coach LaForce has to be a little concerned for the first time in this first half. It looked to me just before that time out there that the Bucks kind of had their head down a little bit. They can't allow that to happen. They're going to have to hang tough and just grind it out. Look at the percentages. East Tennessee, 1 of 16, 12 of 16 for Kansas. That's all you have to look at to see why they're ahead by 24. That plus, I think Kansas only had one turnover. Got two now. They lost that one out of bounds, so <laughs> Bucks get this one. The way East Tennessee can shoot the threes, and as a team, they hit 50% of them. They can get back in any game quickly, but not necessarily against the number two team in the country. It's going to be tough. Well, the pressure, the defensive pressure of Kansas, as we've already pointed out, has just been awesome. Uh, hopefully, that'll the Bucks have to hope that that will let up just a little bit. Get in. They, those are the kind of shots that have to start going down. They're getting the shots that they want to take, the ones they've been hitting, and they're not getting them down. Oh, great feed. Walters missing they missed it on the other end 
goes Darren Hancock who missed the shot. Walters made a great pass. Palmer all the way. Tipped by Jones. Silvers is there. They can't get it to that has, Finally, that, Silvers gets it. Very encouraging. You had three offensive attempts there and finally tipped it in. Three offensive boards. That's Walters. encouraging. Walters short. Rebound Niblett. 28-6. Got, got the numbers. Palmer for three. Switch. There you go. They get in it quickly now. It's 28 to 9. Palmer buries his first three. They're getting, there. They're getting into their rhythm now. Patrick Rich, Ritchie with a trailing jumper, and he hit it. 30 to 9. An objective right now on the part of the Bucks is number one, get this thing down to about 10 points. You've got to get it down to where you're just, you'd like to get it into single figures. David. Oh, that's a break. That's a break. Well, it should have been an illegal screen. They didn't call it. He just let it go. And, and Paul, he thought and knew it was, and he just pulled up and stepped on the inbound line. Let's take a look. All right. He Here's telegraphed the play. it. Oh, without a doubt. You know, now how can you miss something like that? That was right out in the open court. <laughs> it was very obvious. Well, they didn't deserve the basket, and they didn't get it. All right. 13 to go. East Tennessee looking at a 21-point deficit. Palmer penetrates all the way. Boy, when you got somebody that quick and can penetrate like that, you can do a lot of things off of. Well, that that's their. I think that's the best set they have. That and the, and the outside shooting has been the thing that they've been hanging their hat on offensively, and they needed to start having some success with that. There's a problem that you have playing this ball club they're so good at getting the ball inside and they're so athletic when they get it Randy Scott had the jam Darrell Jones fouled him from behind and Scott will draw two shots it's a 30 to 11 Kansas lead with 848 to go here in the first half that's two on Darrell Jones Palmer also has two for the Buccaneers you know that uh, to give you some idea of how balanced and how strong this basketball team is Darren Hancock, one of the great high school players in the country, signed it at Las Vegas and then went to junior college. You haven't even seen him or heard of him out here. And he's one of the great talents in college basketball. Scott's only a 40% foul shooter, and he missed that one. Palmer's out. He hasn't given up. Eric Palmer's out there directing traffic, coaching. He's a competitor, isn't he? Yes, Scott he missed is. this one, and Darrell Jones gets the board. Here come the Bucks. Kansas still in a man-to-man -man defense, but you always have to be alert for that trap. There it is. Very well executed. Palmer missed it. Darrell Jones saves the rebound in the backcourt. Trezell Silvers has got it. Niblett's jumper. Too hard. Boy, East Tennessee's doing what they needed to yeah. do on the boards. That's seven offensive rebounds for them, right? They've, they've settled down, Randy. They're playing excellent basketball. Again, you're going to have to get some shots to go down here. But they're playing very well. They've gotten into their rhythm. They're running their stuff good. Niblett drops it to Pelfrey. Jones Excellent. got it. Excellent play. Excellent play. Set up. They breasted the, t the double team, moved the ball around, caught the open man on the baseline, and finished it off successfully. 30 to 13. 23 point lead's been cut down to 17. Scott the easy bucket thought about jamming it and almost lost the ball going up but it went in for it randy i'm going to tell you that play inside on the offensive end of the floor for kansas is brutal it's as physical as anything that you'll ever see don't palmer. tell me this is a non-contact sport <laughs> palmer knocked that jumper down makes it a 17 point game again 720 to go adonis jordan back in the ball game now and there's a holding foul against Darrell Jones, and that will be three personal fouls on Darrell Jones. We'll check and see if he's going to shoot. He's going to the line, so I assume he is. Pennington comes back in, and Robert Spears for East Tennessee State, 6'10 junior from Big Stone Gap, Virginia, comes in. Darrell Jones goes out with his third foul. Eric Palmer also will sit down. We the, will be shooting. We're at the magic number for the Bucks now. They've committed seven fouls. All the one-shot uh, fouls from here on in become one and ones. Normal one-shot fouls. Scott misses the one and one. A rebound taken away by Kansas. Tipped around. Finally, Trezell Silvers gets it. 
tell you what, the Bucks are doing an excellent job on the boards. You know, they are. That was one of the things they had to do, and that they're executing well. Pelfrey for three. Too hard. There's a foul, and Pelfrey gets three shots. Well, it might be. We'll see. It, it looked to me like that foul might have been after the shot. If it is, it'll just be... It won't be any shot, but it looks like they're going to the line, so it should be three because they are, they are, Kansas only has four team fouls. Pelfrey's a good foul shooter, 78% on the year. Pelfrey's brother, John, played at Kentucky, and I think he told me his brother's playing in Spain. I asked him if his parents they had split time watching the two boys play last year, and now they get to watch him exclusively. It's kind of hard to go to Spain every weekend, right? I'll tell you, his brother was a good one. He was a workhorse. He can shoot it. He's the kind of guy that everybody would like to have on their basketball team. This young man's a hard worker, too. He's just having a little trouble right now with the outside shot. When that thing starts dropping for him, it's going to help him as well as the basketball team. He just needs to have some success on that thing. Pelfrey gets three shots. He's hit one. He gets another. Hit that one, too. So they have cut the Kansas lead to 15, 654. Bucks clawing their way back in. And we'll be back to Kansas right after this. Back in Lawrence, Kansas, Randy Smith along with Norm Sloan as East Tennessee looking at a 15-point deficit, and that's pretty good because it was 23 just a few moments ago. Coming up at halftime during the Coca-Cola halftime report, we'll be chatting with Buckhead coach Alan LaForce in his third season. We'll talk about this matchup with Kansas and the two weeks less practice that he had this past year, which Coach Sloan has a definite opinion on. You know, I, I can... I, Bucks have outscored Kansas 17 to 10 in the last few minutes. Go ahead. You know, uh, I can just imagine what Coach Force was telling the guys over in the, in the huddle over there. You know, you've got things going. You've settled down. You have more or less weathered the storm, so to speak. They started off so hot, and everything was going so great for them. Now I think we have a normal ball game on our hands right now, as, least as far as, as, as the Bucks are concerned. Well, we saw Pennington slap it away from Walters. We saw Jordan take it away from Pennington, but the Bucks get it back with 6.33 to go in the first half. Helfrey inbounds. Bucks hit a three. That leads down to 12. And they telegraphed that pass yeah, beautifully. Yeah. Jordan got the lead. You know, that tells me that this is a well-scouted team right here. In other words, uh, they have been watching East Tennessee very well, haven't they? I was just going to point that out to, to you, Randy, that that's a drill that uh, that East Tennessee uses every day in practice, and that anticipation of that pass was excellent and wound up in a layup for Kansas. Niblett kissed it off the glass, got the jumper to go. Spears almost stole it away. East Tennessee's in a 15 to 6 run since the 11:45 mark. Walters got the left hand layup. Rex Walters. Thirty-six, nineteen, five thirty-five to go. First half. Pelfrey, all the way, missed it. Spears kept it alive. Spears in the lane, got the jumper. Won't go. Came out on it. Great touch. Look, it was down in there and came out. That's just the way things have been going for the Bucks. Can't have that happen, though. You can't go to sleep and leave a man open for it. They have to continue to make them work for everything they get. Scott passed up that, or Pearson rather, passed up that open jumper to hit Scott underneath. Unselfish play right there by Kansas, and that's what it takes to win a national championship, doesn't it? Well, they understand team basketball, Randy. They understand it very well, and they are very unselfish. If, if sometimes they've been the system that Roy uses and the system that came out of North Carolina is accused of overpassing, I don't see that as a sin. Oh, great feed. Was Walters. A, was a great feed, yes. <laughs> got a, Scott couldn't Bucks, handle it. Buck's got a break there. Now take advantage of it. Got Eric Palmer back in the ball game. Maybe he can heat it up here and drill a few of those threes. It was interesting the last time down on offense, the Bucks didn't use the high post screen again, the one that was intercepted for a layup. They, they <laughs> wisely went to another set. They picked off a couple of those. Now they're going to change basketball. Well, Trezell Silvers is back in along with Palmer. Um, 
38-19 your score. Oh, nice very, speed. Very well executed. Good ball movement by the Bucks, but Kansas reacted well. Boy, their hands everywhere. Patterson's jumping too hard. Rebound, Walter. Woodbury saves it. Jumper off that baseline is good by Steve Woodbury. Forty nineteen, twenty one point lead again. Niblett's jumper, good. Jason Niblett's hit a couple of big buckets in the last two minutes or so. Well, somebody's got to play some defense. Nobody did anything there. Jordan just unmolested. Can't leave the middle open like that, Randy. You have, you have to seal that middle down. You know, somehow or other, Trezell has to get involved in this offense down there. The only thing he's had going for him so far is offensive boards. They're going to have to get him into the offense and shake him loose a little bit. Patterson got the garbage, 42-23. Woodbury. Kansas working. Patrick Ritchie gets the open jumper. But we noticed in warm-ups that that young man had a great touch. He can shoot the three, too. Lead back up to 21 with just over three minutes to go first half. Kansas in control since the opening tip. Went out 22 to nothing before East Tennessee scored. Pelfrey takes it in. Pauly blocked it, took it away. Silvers is blocked in foul from behind by Ritchie. And Silvers will get two. Well, the Bucks opened the court up then, went to a, to a passing game, and made something good happen out of it. That's that's an excellent change. That gives some of this. The, Take another come. Look. the court was opened up, gave Pelfrey a drive. On the help, they opened up Silvers for the offensive rebound. So I, I like the mix that they're that they're demonstrating out there. They're not staying with one thing, and if something doesn't work, they get away from it and give something else a chance. Trezell Silvers went into this season for East Tennessee with a career high of 17 points. Now he's averaging more than that. He's really done a good job for the Bucks. I'm impressed with him. This young man's got a lot of talent. He's having to struggle out there right now, but a lot of the Bucks have been. But I'm very impressed with his play. You know, he's shooting over 80% from three-point range. I had he hits one of two free throws, makes it a 20-point game with 2.51 left. We'll take a timeout. Be back to Lawrence right after this. Kansas has a 20-point lead, but they jumped out 22 nothing, and it was as big as 23. The Bucks have finally been able to get a little offense going, and Coach, 2.51, they got a lot of time left. The Bucks, I don't know that they can come back and win this game, but they, I think they, they may accomplish the goal they set to come in here. That's to play well. Well, I like to see them cut this down because I think they're playing better than the score indicates. You're looking at a Kansas team that is tremendously impressive and everything's going right for them. They are awfully good, Randy. I had no idea that they were this good. I, 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 I had to, I shared Coach LaForce's feeling that they were probably playing the best basketball in the country right now, but I didn't know they had this much quickness throughout the entire lineup. Woodbury back in, Richie. Sits down, played well despite the injury. Andy Pennington has come back in. Let's look at the bench scoring. Kansas outscored the Bucks bench 15 to 2, but a little misleading because the Bucks don't have much of a bench. They got some players hurt. There's Pauly with a jumper over Patterson. 46 24. As the game goes on, Randy, it'll be harder and harder to comp to, co to compete with that size down there because fatigue will take over and you'll lose a little quickness and then the, the size is just overpowering. I thought he got that basket off easy. Palmer tries to hit Silvers, lost it out of bounds. Palmer went up, may have, may should have taken the shot, but he saw Silvers streak to the bus bucket and missed him. He needs something good to happen for him on the other end too. He's getting a little dejected here as far as the offensive end of the floor is concerned. East Tennessee lost by 12 at Purdue in the finals of the Boilermaker Classic, and everybody's pretty impressed with that. Give and go, Jordan. What a shot. No good. Rebound. A couple of misses in there. Finally, McClellan gets the rebound for East Tennessee State. Palmer for three. No good. Long rebound saved by McClellan to Palmer. They'll try again with 135 to go in the half. 
good to see McClellan in there after that sprain he had in, in, work, in the workout yesterday. They need him. Bucks can't afford to lose anybody. They're just too short-handed to start with. Foul on Adonis Jordan for Kansas. Check and see how many fouls that is. Not many. And coming back in, Jason Niblett and Jerry Pelfrey for McClellan and Pennington for East Tennessee. 127 to go in the half. Among the other topics that we discussed with Alan LaForce, which we'll be talking about at halftime, the fact that this East Tennessee State team lost over 80% of its scoring and rebounding from last year. They truly are in a rebuilding mode, and I'm, I, I think they need to. I think they should be encouraged. I see a lot of good things out there. This, they're just playing an awesome basketball team, having a great night right now. Hancock had the open layup, missed it. Rebound to Niblett. Here's Silver. Great move. Great move. Great move in there. Now that that was quickness and power, and he finished it off perfectly. Excellent. Adonis Jordan with the ball in the front court. Pauly, the trailing jumper, he just knocked the bottom out. That's another characteristic of this system, and that is your big man trailing and being at the top of the circle and knocking down the jumper. They all do that. 48-26, under a minute to go in the first half. A three in the corner by Eric Palmer. Get him, get him off the mark here, and it's going to help, too. I'm very impressed with that young man. 19-point game for Kansas. 30 seconds to go, first half. Rex Walters back in now. Woodbury on the baseline. Whistle and a foul. It'll be against East Tennessee. I believe it's on Pelfrey or Patterson one. We'll see as they unstack. You know, Randy, you teach your defensive. All right, here we go. Here's a replay of this. Foul was on Silvers. Reaching in on, on Hancock. Hancock, 6'7", junior from Griffin, Georgia. Well, it gets real quiet when they go to the line here, doesn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a great crowd. This, this is a, a very knowledgeable basketball crowd. It's very obvious. Hancock makes the first of two. He'll get another. Got it. This young man is very talented, this Hancock. They're in a full court, zone trap. And the Bucks handle it beautifully. They got the ball down into the front court and ready to go to work now. Go to work. Ten seconds to go. Here's Palmer. Drops it off. Patterson. Good. Excellent. Nice shot by Patterson off that baseline. And that's the way the first half's going to end. 19-point Kansas lead over East Tennessee at intermission. There's Roy Williams. He has nothing to complain about. His team has played very, very well. They lead East Tennessee 50-31, and we'll be back with our halftime activities in a moment. We're back at halftime now, and Coach Allen LaForce is with us. Coach, your basketball team playing pretty well in the first few weeks of the season. Going into this basketball game, you had a few days off, and do uh, you think that's the kind of thing that hurts you or helps you? Well, we, we hope it's going to help us. Uh, this was sort of planned uh, because we... NCAA took two weeks away from us, and with the young basketball team, we felt like we need some practice time. We felt like we get, we, there's some areas that we need to improve on. Uh, you know, I never advocate staying off two weeks. Uh, that's the reason we had a, our exhibition game sandwiched in between a layoff, and that helps some. Uh, you can't simulate the intensity of a game as you can in practice. You try to, but you don't get the same. So we need to play, uh, but I think the layoff uh, from the standpoint of, of getting some things accomplished helped us. Let's talk about the, the two weeks they took away from you. I don't know any coach that likes this, and what's your uh, reaction to the uh, first season of this? Well, I, I really don't understand it. You know, we're the only team, uh, basketball teams are the only teams that don't have spring practice. Uh, they didn't take away from any time from anybody else. They take two weeks from us, and, and, and you take the NCAA basketball championships away from the NCAA, and uh, I don't know where the money's going to come from. And I don't think this helps basketball. I think it's unfair to the players. I think it's unfair to the coaches. I think it's unfair to the fans. You had a real tough chore coming in, replacing 80, 85 percent of your scoring, a whole bunch of rebounds. But you got some good players out there that really play hard, don't you? Well, we got some good kids. Uh, got some guys that uh, that haven't played together, but they've had some experience. The Pelfries, uh, you know, the Jones, uh, Silvers, uh, Niblett, Palmer. Those guys, have, they've been around. They know what it takes to 
to get to the big show, and that's your ultimate to get in the NCAA. Uh, we just have to uh, have a little patience with our young guys and have to have a little patience of putting these guys together. See, they played roles. They played, you know, four, go in four or five minutes, and they're out, play a role. Now they're asked to play 10 or 12 minutes, come out, and rest a couple minutes, go back in, and end up playing 28 or 30 minutes a game. So the roles have changed, and it's going to take us a while for, to get our chemistry, uh, get our personality together. The win well, the, the teams are back out onto the floor now, and at halftime, Kansas leads East Tennessee State. 50. Stay with us. We'll be back with the second half right after this. on the Bucks. Buccaneer basketball is brought to you by Coca-Cola, your local Coca-Cola bottlers, by Shoney's restaurants throughout the Tri-Cities, Nations Bank, making a difference, and by Northside Hospital with emergencies and wait. Well, we're ready to go. In fact, we are underway. The Bucks get the basketball to start the second half. They're down 19, 50-31. Out of bounds, off the hands of East Tennessee. And take a look now at the stats of the first half while we have a break. East Tennessee only 29% compared to 57% norm from the, or 61% for Kansas. Well, you, that, that's a that's a terrible difference in there. There's no question about it, and it gives you some idea why they're down 19 points. But again, as we pointed out, they were getting good shots. And as the stats told us, we were even in rebounding, 23 all. Even in rebounds, and the turnover differential was 8-5. to five. So, you know, other than the poor shooting percentage, and it wasn't because of bad shots, as I say again, the Bucks are doing a better job than the score indicates. Two teams swap turnovers here in the first 20 seconds, so East Tennessee gets it back down 19. Jarrell Jones. Giselle Silvers has it now. Pelfrey for three. Yes. That helps. That helps. Oh, don't you know that does a lot for Pelfrey's confidence. He's only hitting 18% on the year going in. He needs to knock down a few of those. So he had good ball movement there, and he wound up with an open shot, and it hit nothing but net. Walters drops it back to Scott. Missed the shot. Rebound Silvers. Bucks down by 16. Two on two quickly. Palmer to Niblett. Oh, nice fake. Palmer, or rather Niblett. Tipped around and going over the back to the foul will be East Tennessee State. Beyond Pelfrey, I believe. And it is. Pelfrey picks up the personal foul, and it's two for him in the first team foul on East Tennessee this half. Eighteen thirty-five to go, Kansas by 16. Shot won't go, tapped off, tapped around, controlled by the Bucks. Here's Pelfrey with it. Right here's Palmer. I was hoping he would make that move. That was just a great move. Get it. I was hoping the middle was open and he came down and gave him a little shake and bake and took it home and they got a nice offensive board out of it. 14 points. That's as close as the Bucks have been since Kansas was ahead 14-0. <laughs> Walters with the ball. Off the left hand. Won't go. Long rebound by Niblett. They are human. They are human. Not every shot's going to go down. Niblett. Yes. Now the Bucks are looking great. They're giving good help on defense on the other end, and the bucket's going down on this end. 12-point game now. 50-38. Bucks have outscored them 7-0 to start this half. Here's Hancock. He ends the drought, which was two and a half minutes for Kansas to start the second half. Bucks now have 14 offensive rebounds in the game. Here's Niblett. Off balance and good defense by Kansas. Walters takes it away. It was good defense, and the shot was blocked, and they came up with the basket. It's a little too easy, Randy. Now, they've been working too well to go down and give. I know Walters is a great player, but that's a little too easy. He's going to have to make him work a little harder for Baskets. Walters made it happen on both ends. He got the steal and got the bucket on the other end. Here's Pelfrey. 
Works at baseline. There's a holding foul against Kansas. I was glad to see that call, Randy. I think that uh, that Pelfrey's been bumped quite a bit like that on those moves he's making to the basket. But here you see, there he is. Make, he took the step, got around him. Now you see him bumping him. That's been going on. I'm glad to see that call made. Foul was on Hancock. Attendance tonight just under 16,000. 15 8, that's capacity. And there, I don't see any empty seats here, do you? And they're on student break. <laughs> you know, this is the end of the semester, and this place is packed. Pelfrey makes the first of two shots. Pelfrey with six points. Pelfrey with seven. Leading score in the first half for East Tennessee with Palmer with 10. 54-40, lead is 14 again. Pauley goes down low to Scott. Scott in trouble, had it taken away, and then there's the foul as Patterson is in the lineup now for East Tennessee. And Scott may have been poked in the eye. Even though they got called on the foul, the coach, of course, has to feel good about that because they've been getting hurt inside. When the ball went inside then, Randy, they had three guys drop back in there to help. So you have to feel good about that. Walters getting set to inbound the basketball, and we are waiting for Trezell Silver to tie a shoe. Now we'll play it in. Woodbury in the ball game now as Kansas continues to play a lot of folks. Walters misses the three. Pauly got the long rebound, but he's pushing off against Tony Patterson, and the Bucks get it back. Now we're getting the norm. Let's take another look. There's the shot by Walters. Palmer with the ball, 54-40. Niblet is open. Got the jumper, missed it. Long rebound controlled by Woodbury of Kansas. Woodbury, shot rejected by Patterson. Good job. Bucks run with it now, five on two. Niblet missed the three. Trezell Silvers missed the follow, and Pauley gets the rebound. East Tennessee had a five-on-two advantage and couldn't score. Pauley with a trailing jumper, no good, and Scott's going over the back. No, it's on Pelfrey. Yeah, we're getting we're getting a lot of calls. In, in. There you go. You know you. Should. You're going to call one on Pelfrey on that when, it, when, when the Kansas man had his arm over uh, Pelfrey's shoulder. Th those things happen, yeah, but that isn't right. It's a tough thing to happen to the Bucks at this point. They don't need breaks like that. Exactly 16 minutes to go in the game, 54-40. Kansas has only scored four points in the first four minutes and five seconds. Another foul against East Tennessee. This one, well, I believe, is going to be on Patterson. Let's see. No, it's on Palmer. Yeah, I was afraid it was on Palmer. There was a back screen there that hooked Patterson. Going to take a timeout as Eric Palmer picks up his third foul. We'll be back to Lawrence, Kansas in just a moment. East Tennessee State has outscored Kansas by a count of 9-4 to four to start this half. They've cut that lead to 14 with 15.55 to go here in the basketball game in Lawrence, Kansas. Fog Allen field out. They work it in to Pauly out high. Here's Woodbury way outside. Shot off the side of that rim, and Palmer gets the long board. Pelfrey with it. Pelfrey pulls up for the three. Swish. Jerry Pelfrey bangs a three, and it's an 11-point game. He had perfect form on that, and he shot with a lot of confidence. That's what making a basket or two is going to do for you. Good and ball movement. The ball was swung around. Some, they're making some good things happen out there now. Rex Walter's going to be hit for a blocking foul, and East Tennessee gets it back, and look at this. They've got a chance to cut this to single digits. And that's, still a lot of time left. That's your immediate goal. Second you take half, it from there. Right, second half, East Tennessee's outscored Kansas 12-4. to Palmer to Patterson on the left side. Patterson works at baseline, pulls up, misses the jumper. It's an air ball as the fans let him know about it. Here's Adonis Jordan. Bucks could have cut it to single digits if that one had gone down for Patterson. Patrick Ritchie in the game now for Kansas. He takes the ball in the lane. And Pauley got the reverse layup. And that's excellent ball handling on the inside. And again, that is 
it's a classic example of this offense. Niblett has the ball on the right side, dogged by Walters. Good job again defensively by Kansas. Patterson's turnaround missed again. Frizzell Silvers, and then Patterson gets the follow-up jam. With authority. That's, a good, that's an offensive board with authority. It's a lot of confidence building out there, Randy, right now on the, on the part of the Bucks. It looks good. Pauly goes up over Patterson with a follow, and it's 58-45. 13-point lead again for Kansas. Palmer for three. <laughs> yeah. And that's classic on his part, too. Eh? That's, that's not the exception. That's the rule for him. That's, he does that very well. Little stutter step, gets up and gets a jump roll. Under the 14-minute mark, it's a 10-point Kansas lead. Has been as many as 20. Woodbury, nice drive. Patterson reached around him, and Woodbury just blew past him. Patterson's a young player, and he's, he's, it's a great learning experience for him here. He's playing against some quicker people than he normally has to. Oh, come They're on. They're going to disallow this basket. Come on, come on. That's great, great offensive board by Silvers. Great offensive board by Silvers. Let's take another look and see. All right, here you go. Let's see if that ball was in the cylinder or not. There's the layup. Rebound. Can't hard, really to, hard, to, hard to tell from the angle, but from the angle we have here on the side, look, look, it looked legal to me. 60-48, 12-point lead. Walters all the way. There's a blocking foul yeah. against East Tennessee. I started to point out a while ago, Randy, when, when uh, the Bucks were on defense, you teach the classic... Uh, 45 angle on, on defense where you kind of open the door for the guy on the drive. These guys are so quick that uh, when you do that, you, you've got yourself a real serious problem. Bucks have outscored Kansas by 17 to 10 here in this half. Now Roy Williams and the officials are talking. See that we uh, to go back to that defensive play again. The Bucks got the weak side help they needed, but it just didn't get there quick enough. You're playing. You're talking about they're not going to play a team any quicker than this. And I may say they might not play a team this quick again this year unless they meet Kansas in postseason play. Walters with the free throws. He hits the first. Makes it a 61-48 game. East Tennessee State's been to the NCAA's four consecutive seasons. As Patterson checks back in, Darrell Jones will sit down for the Bucks. And East Tennessee finally got their first win in the NCAA play when they upset Arizona in the first round, then lost to Michigan in the second round. Gave Michigan a good game. Sixty-two forty-eight, fourteen point lead, Kansas. It's obvious, Randy, that Kansas has developed a lot of respect for the quickness of this Buck team because they've backed that full court pressure off quite a bit. Palmer's pass for Patterson couldn't be handled, and neither could that pass by Walters. And the Bucks get it back with 13.07 to go in the ball game. There's Pearson. He couldn't handle that pass. A little bit ahead of him by Walters. Roy Williams played freshman ball at North Carolina and went into coaching, and boy, he stayed there a while. Learned from one of the greatest, Dean Smith. Nice. Oh, excellent cut. Good Look, feed. See the, see the bump? I'll tell you what. He, hung, he got bumped around real good and hung in there, and they, and they wound up with a basket. Silver's great offensive board. Pelfrey made it happen with a nice move to the right. bucket, and then Silver's got to follow. 12-point game again. 12.30 to go. Walters dogged by Niblett. Walters pulls up, missed the jumper, long rebound, controlled by Palmer, and here come the Bucks again, the chance to cut it back to 10. There's oh, the, oh, off the goal it goes, saved by Pelfrey. Nice job. See, see I'm, I I'll tell you, Pelfrey's making some good moves, and he's getting a lot of, a lot of, of uh, physical bumping as he makes it go. All right, here you go. There's the trap. You get... You get the ball back to Palmer. Palmer dribbles down the middle, breaks it. He's, he's awfully good at this. And the hands are in the passing lane as far as Kansas is concerned all the time, Randy. You're just going to see a hand in the passing lane all the time. Scoring guard competition. Big time move there. Silver, Silver's Whoa. put a shake and bake. 
Boom, and hit the pull-up jumper. That's a big-time move. Shooting guards, 22-20. Kansas, close. That's where East Tennessee's offense has come from. Pearson missed it. Niblett got the rebound. Bucks look for the advantage as they come up the floor. Niblett trailing to Pelfrey, who's wide open for three. Missed it. Silvers blocked and fouled by Richard Scott. And the Bucks can go to single digits here if Silvers can connect. You know, Randy, everybody was kind of hoping. That here we come on a replay of this. There's the shot by Pelfrey again. Nice release. Just didn't go down. But look at Silvers on this follow. Big time. Finished it off beautifully. The Bucks right now are not only holding their own. They're out playing Kansas to this point. That's and, very encouraging. And they are out rebounding Kansas. 19 to 7 on the offensive board. And now it's a nine-point game as Pennington and Robert Spears check in for the Buccaneers. Patterson is doing a fine job. He's, he's an excellent-looking young prospect. But what he's going through out there right now is an increased number of playing minutes. And he just isn't in condition, mentally or physically, for that much big-time playing time right now. That will improve and increase as time goes by. Allen's doing a super job of getting that kid in and out and getting the maximum out of him. Frizzell Silvers makes both free throws, and he's got 12 rebounds in this ballgame. We've got a timeout, and what used to be a 23-point lead for Kansas is now only eight. And we'll be back to Lawrence, Kansas, right after this. In the first eight minutes and 13 seconds of this second half, the Bucks have outscored Kansas 23 to 12, and they're back in this game. Let's take a look. Now here's the drive. A little walk there, but there's Hancock going up. What happened? You'll see. You don't. There you see the knee. He's down on the floor, and I think that's Palmer running over him, dragged his knee across him. He took a pretty good lick there. I, I, I wonder whether he got a broken nose out of it or not. For the first time since the first two minutes of the game, as you see the score, first 620 was 22 nothing. The last 21 53, it's 54 40 bucks. First six minutes was terrible for East Tennessee State. By the they way, steal it away. Spears and Silvers. Hancock's nose is all right, but his judgment wasn't very good right then. He threw the ball right into two defenders. Oh, oh Eric Palmer buries a three. Folks, we got a five point ball game. You got yourself a basketball game here, and I know there are a lot of people surprised by this. Fans trying to get behind the Jayhawks here. They had a 23 point lead. Now it's only five and 11.04 to go. Patrick Ritchie with the ball. Adonis Jordan's going to check back in at the next opportunity for Kansas. Jayhawks with the ball being patient. 15 seconds left on the shot clock. 10.43 on the game clock. Palmer against Rayford. There's a foul. It'll be against Palmer. If it is, I believe that's four. And if that's the case, that, that's, a, that's just exactly what you don't want to have happen. That young man, was he had it going, and now he's got to play under the handicap of four fouls. In all probability, he has to come out now. Here comes Niblett in, and so... He's going to sit down. Somebody will have to take up the slack here for him because he was he really had it going. Here it is. Here's the play. There it is. And he did. He got him across the arm. Wasn't any question about that. Good footwork, but used his hands wrong. You don't go down. If you're going to knock that ball out, you got to come up from the bottom, Randy. If you go down, you're almost going to get caught with a foul 100% of the time. Calvin Rayford will get two shots as Tony Patterson comes in. Jason Niblett will also come in. Rayford misses the first free throw. Robert Spears and Palmer go out for the Bucks as Palmer picked up his fourth foul. Rayford gets another. Missed a pair. Rebound taken away and somebody's shoving. It'll be Tony Patterson, I believe, of East Tennessee. So Kansas gets them all back on the side following two misses by Calvin Rayford. Patterson gets the foul. It's his second. And that'll be... Team foul number seven on East Tennessee. So the Bucks are watching Kansas go into the one and one early. 10.36 to go in the ball game. Trezell Silvers will check in for East Tennessee at the next opportunity. Three fouls in the ball game for East Tennessee against Jerry Palfrey. Four on Eric Palmer. Now McClellan checks out for the Bucks as we see Silvers go back in. 
was glad to see McClellan get in there. I didn't see him come up out of the dressing room at, at, at the beginning of the second half. I was afraid that his hand was hurting and he wasn't going to be able to play the second half here. They need him. Seven point game. Full court pressure by Kansas. Giselle Silvers gets it off to Pelfrey and the Bucks beat the press. Roy Williams and the 15,000 or so Jayhawk fans wanted the travel. Pennington gets the jumper off that baseline and the Bucks are heating it up now with 10-14 to go. Five point game. Whistle and away from the ball, a foul against Kansas. No? no Patterson. It's, no, it's against it's against the Bucks. That's Tony Patterson. It's his yeah. third. And his reaction to the call was that he did not disagree with it. So he must have he, he was, must have given a little shove down. Yeah, he was clapping his hands like it was against Pauly, but he was just agreeing. Yeah. A lot of time left in this one. Ten minutes, ten seconds. Pauly with a one and one makes the first. Makes it a 65-59 Kansas lead. Pauly gets another rip. Pauly's a good shooter for a big 6'10 kid. Seven point game again, Kansas. He sure looks a lot more impressive in games than he does in practice, and that's the way it's supposed to be. Got a little half court zone trap here now. Patterson, nice ball movement by the Bucks. And Patterson knocks the jumper down. Can't do it any better than that, Randy. That was excellent. There's a steal by Pelfrey. Silvers comes out of there with it. Silvers all the way. No good. But the foul on Walters will give Silvers two shots. I'm going to tell you, Silvers is a... Is a... Okay, here we go. We're going to get a look at this now. There's a fumble of the, of the pass. Ball's knocked out by Pelfrey. Here comes Silvers just outrunning everybody. And Rex Walters, who is an excellent athlete, comes around him and again use that classic move of slapping down instead of slapping up and he gets caught for the foul too. Silvers at the line for two. Silvers will cut the lead to three if he hits both of these. Got the first one. Bucks have hit 11 of 22, 50% in the second half. But Kansas only five of 14. And like you said, Norman, the first part of this ball game, that can't last. No, and the, the, the whole the situation just reversed now. Silvers, second of two, got a pair. Trezell Silvers having a great second half, and the Bucks have cut 23 down to three. Pauly with it in the corner to Brad Ritchie. Walters off that left hand. Good job by Rex Walter. Good job. That was a big time play because when he was up in the air, the ball was hit. He had to reset. And seconds on the shot clock. That's it. Don't try to do it on your own now. Wonderful. Big time. That's too bad that didn't go down. You know, they executed perfectly there, Randy. Had the double team. Executed perfectly. The ball just didn't go down. Pelfrey gets the personal foul. Let's take another look at Pelfrey. Right, gets here we his are. Fourth. There's Silvers on the shot. There's the rebound effort, and there is Pelfrey going over the back. That's a legitimate call. But before that, I don't know whether you saw Patterson in the center from Kansas. It was pretty physical in there where they were. But that was a legitimate call there. Two East Tennessee starters, Pelfrey and Palmer, each with four fouls. Adonis Jordan makes the first of a one and one and it's a six point lead. Well, you know what? In, in Jordan. Pelfrey, Jones, Palmer, all of them with four fouls and East Tennessee had only nine players dressed out for this game. So that's critical because a lot of time left. Yeah, 839. It's too much time for to have that many key players with that kind of foul trouble. You know, you got you just saw a run there by Kansas led by what a lot of people think might be the best backcourt duo in the country and they those two guys typically took over and made the plays that they were supposed to play if they're that good seven point ball game this kansas crowd is loud boisterous
Pennington and Niblett play catch with it on the outside. Pennington for three. Yes. Andy Pennington, the freshman. Tell you what, he's come in there and he's hit a couple of big buckets. Four-point game again. Eight minutes to go. Into the lane. There's a steal, but first a holding foul against Tony Patterson. And Patterson gets his fourth. And now four bucks oh. have four fouls. I think, again, what you saw, Randy, Patterson's playing a great game. I'm, these young guys are doing a great job in a very hostile situation here. Not, I won't say hostile, but loud. But he came around again, swiped down, instead of coming up from the bottom, you see. It's just going to, there's just going to be an automatic foul called on that almost every time. 70-66, a four-point Kansas lead. Eight minutes, one second left to be played in it. And Pauly will go to the line with a one and one. He's a good foul shooter, Pauly. As you look at the free throws, Kansas 13 out of 19, 68%. Pauly makes the first 67% foul shooter on the year. East Tennessee has been whistled 18 times in this game. Kansas 12. Well, the next, fortunately uh, for the Bucks, the next foul by Kansas puts them into the seven foul team foul situation and they'll be shooting one and ones on every foul also so that's that's a positive Darrell Jones gets the rebound off the miss by Pauly five point game Kansas they've led from the onset no ties no lead changes in this one 740 to go They're trying to trap Niblett, get him in trouble, and he whistled a timeout. Niblett got in trouble and wisely called a timeout as Kansas trapped him over there with 7.32 to go. We'll take a timeout. Jayhawks by five, and we'll be back in just a moment. 71-66, your score. Let's take a look at Kansas' defense on this play. And the thing that you can't see on this is the crowd. They're part of the defense, too. But here is Niblett going to the sideline, and Paulie and Adonis go over, and they put an impossible. I mean, he's just trapped where he can't get it. He made the only play he could make, a good he, timeout. He couldn't even bounce the ball no. off one of them. There's no, no room way. to do that. Bucks have 15 seconds on the shot clock, so there's time to set a play. We need, well, to get it, need to get it in somebody's hand who can create something like that guy right there. Oh Absolutely my. awesome. And a foul will be against Pauly, and Trezell Silvers jams at home. Yeah. He left his feet about three feet in front of the free throw line. There were only two people out there that should have the ball in their hands, and it was Niblett and, and Trezell. It's a three-point game. He Here he is, coming around. He sees the opening, kicks in the afterburner. He's up above everything, and with authority, slams it home. Big Silvers, time play. Silvers with 16 points on the night. Got 17, and look at the Bucks. They're down only two with 7.19 to go. East Tennessee clawed and scratched and shot their way back in this one after being down 23 early in the first half. And they have been in control of this second half at Kansas. Along the baseline, Woodbury, Ritchie passed up the shot. Kansas being very patient now, 17 on the shot clock. They're being very patient, making some good cuts, but I'll tell you, East, the, the Bucks are playing some fine defense, too. Ritchie, Ritchie misses the three, Adonis Jordan. Got the offensive board, got the shot, and a chance at a three-point play. You know, here's the, here's the shot. Rebound. Adonis gets the rebound, goes inside. You know, every time they need a bucket or every time they need something good to happen, either Walters or Adonis Jordan have come through for him. Jordan will be at the line with one shot. 6.39 to go. In the basketball game, as Darrell Jones is fouled out of the ball game with his fifth foul, he fouls out with four points and eight rebounds. Darrell Jones, not known as a great offensive player, but he's a good role player 
Good defense inside, a good rebounder. You know, I had six rebounds in the first half. He's done a, an excellent job tonight. I, I, I have... I feel good about what I see on the part of the Bucks. I told you that as, as the first half was going along. It seems strange to say that when you're down by 19, down sometimes by 20. But I think what they've done here in the second half indicates and should tell everybody this is going to be a very fine basketball team. Jordan misses, and Robert Spears gets the rebound for East Tennessee. Bucks can cut it to one with a three, or cut it to two with a bucket. Niblet for three, yes. Jason Niblet makes it a two, a one-point game. 6.15 to go. You know, Allen has, uh, the coach of the fours has put Palmer back in the game. I'm impressed with that. There's six minutes to go in the game. He has four fouls on him, but he wasn't going to be able to do any good for you sitting down over there with him in the game. Now, he's the one that made the penetration, kicked it off, and created the open shot. Pauly gets the personal foul away from the ball, and with six minutes and five seconds left in a basketball game, East Tennessee can take the lead. Let's take a look. All right, here's the play. Here's Pauly moving around over here. On you can see him in the camera. I didn't see the. I didn't see what Pauly did there. I don't know whether he did or maybe somebody else did it, but it certainly wasn't a foul based on what we saw on Pauly, and there was one there. Well, they aren't going to call it here at Kansas. Too bad. Robert Spears misses the one and one. That would have given the Bucks a lead if he hit both. Jordan, they go down low to Pauly. He got it. Over Spears. Three-point lead again for Kansas with 5.49 to go. Now, when Pauly gets the ball down in there that low with you but directly behind him, you got problems. You know, Kansas got the ball. Jordan. Yeah. It's Pauly, and it's stolen what? by Jason Niblett. We got ourselves a great basketball game here. This is exciting. Tremendous crowd. Both teams playing well. This, this is a great basketball game. Way to go. Niblett makes a big steal. He knocks it. Oh! I'm telling you, folks. <laughs> we are tied. Are, are taking it to him. 5-15. We're tied for the first time in the game. This is what college basketball is all about. Oh, my. 75 all. Jason Niblett made that happen. Got the steal, then got the three. Oh, a big shove off by Walters there. Missed the shot. Here they come. Got the numbers here. No, they're going to. Oh. Look at Niblett. I'm telling you, is he hot? He feels it. He's saying, give me the basketball. I'll do it for you. Oh, my. <laughs> Unbelievable. East Tennessee, 11 of 23 in three-point shooting in this game. Kansas, one out of five. Bucks have the lead, and we'll be back in just a moment. Stay with us. Jason Niblett is simply unconscious for East Tennessee State. The Bucks, have, as a team, hit 11 of 23. Right. Let's take a look at Niblett with a steal, then the bucket. It's a three-point shot, and that not only is three points. Take a look at it. Here we go again. Looks like a replay. <laughs> and I'm telling you, those two are big psychologically. First half, three-point goal, three for 13. They're eight of 10 this half. Niblett's four out of eight from three-point land in this game. Bucks have the lead now, 4.30 to go. Woodbury against Pelfrey. Woodbury got the bucket. It's a one-point East Tennessee State lead. It was a big-time one-on-one move. He got good help. He just made a great play. Eric Palmer, Niblett. Palmer, Pelfrey, and Patterson all in the game now with four fouls. Darrell Jones has already fouled out for the Buccaneers. I'd like to see Palmer get the ball out here on top. I don't think Woodbury can stay with him. Woodbury doesn't think he can either. <laughs> Niblett with the ball, 14 seconds on the shot clock. Buccaneers with a one-point lead. Here's Niblett, foul by Walters, okay, and Niblett draws two shots. Niblett did what I was hoping Palmer would do. It. I tell you, these two young, these two small guards for East East Tennessee are big time. Here's a good look at him going one on one, shaking and baking, got him off stride, and then. Obviously a definite foul. The man goes to the line for two shots now. 
Niblett on the year has not made a free throw, has an attempted one. Go down, he missed that one. All right, he'll get one more. If he hits it, East Tennessee will have a two-point lead. On the next Kansas foul, both teams will, on every foul, shoot two free throws. One out of two for Niblett from the free throw line. It's a two-point Buccaneer lead. 3.41 to go. Walters for three. In and out. Kept alive by Patterson. Pelfrey's got it. Walters misses the three. Patterson kept it alive for Jerry Pelfrey to get the rebound. I think the Bucks are opening the court up a little bit here now, and they're looking for some of these one-on-one -on -one things I was talking to you about. There's Niblett with the ball again out there. I think they feel that he can take Walters, and he proved a while ago just on the last play that he could. Here's the trap. There's the rotation. Palmer comes out of there. Bucks being very patient with 11 seconds on that shot clock. Boy, is he demonstrating confidence. Look at this. Patterson, a charge against Eric Palmer. Uh, yeah, it was a charge. That's a big time hurt. Young man, young man made a great play. Here Let's we go. On, here we go on a replay of it. Gives him a nice shake and bake. Goes to the right, goes around him, gets by him. But the defensive player down in there has a position and it's a definite charge. It's too bad. But the young man made a great play, just his momentum carried him too far forward. On the other end, it'll be two shots for Steve Woodbury. Woodbury has not missed a free throw. He's hitting 100%. Yeah. Palmer fouls out with 16 points. Now you... Keep in mind, though, Pelfrey and Patterson are both in there for East Tennessee. They each have four. You know, I liked what I just saw. He, he fouled out. Palmer pulled his guys together, put his arms around them, gave him a big word of encouragement, trotted off the floor. You know, now there's a guy that didn't hang his head and go kick a chair and so forth. He did the best he could do to help. He's leading the court. They got great chemistry on this Buck team. They got great winning tradition. We talked about this. We talked to the team about this. Like yeah. You did. You talked about it. They know how to win. Didn't phase them a bit to come in here and play Kansas. As Woodbury makes the first of two. <laughs> Woodbury will get a second shot. 79-78 is the score. Missed it. Kept alive. Woodbury got it back and got it. Yes. They showed the Bucks have showed great poise. They're really gonna be tested now. They are chasing that basketball. Great job of ball movement. Silvers missed it. Patterson up, no good. Hancock got it. Awful lot of contact taking place out there right now, Randy. A lot of contact. Walters with the ball. Kansas has a one-point lead. Just over two minutes to go. A lot of time for anything to happen. Walters has it against Pennington. Walters lost it. There's a foul on Niblett. Yeah, it was, there was a reach-in on that. And if he hadn't fouled, he was in. It, all right, you're going to see a guy. Now, Walters is driving. He's trying to pass the basketball, I think. But he got fouled before he was able to exit. So he goes to the line. He's going to shoot two. Foul was on Pennington and not Niblett. It's only one on Pennington. And Niblett still has not committed a personal foul. I kind of, it looked like he might have been the one that reached in then. But now here you got again, Walters. Great guard. Great leader in the big play. 81-79. Two-point lead, Kansas. 153 to go. And Walters with a second of two. Got it. Walters coolly sinks two. And right. Kansas back up by three. Kansas is man to man here, but you gotta be alert for a trap at any minute. If they stay man to man, they're gonna have a hard oh I use a a holding foul against yes. Hancock. 
And that'll put East Tennessee at the line with two shots. Going to the line for East Tennessee State will be Jerry Pelfrey. Let's take a look. He, he gets shoved as he turns the corner. There's a shove there. He definitely, he definitely deserves to be on the free throw line. Pelfrey misses the first of two. He'll get another. If he makes it, he cuts that Kansas lead to two with a minute 34 to go. Got it. Drain that one. Got himself a two-point ball game now. Big defensive series coming up now. They're all big, but you're right down here at crunch time now. Two-point game. Adonis Jordan. He's the guy that Kansas wants with the ball in his hand here. Walters for three. Missed it. Right. Hancock. Got it. Missed it. Tipped by Pauley. Got it. Pauley got up and got the tip in. Four-point game, a minute to go. Niblett, jumper, yes, Jason Niblett. Well, his, he has come through and made some big buckets for the Bucks too. He's given that leadership. He's doing oh. Two-point game with 43 seconds. They've opened the court up now, Kansas has, and they're going to go into the... Look, there was a back door. They're going to look for a one-on-one -on -one or a back door here, and they're running time off the clock. There's seven seconds difference in the game clock and shot clock. Yeah. Jordan in trouble again, 18 on the shot clock. Oh, he walks, in my opinion. Walters has it on the baseline. Back to Hancock. Step, three seconds. Three seconds. Well, that's, that's justice, because I thought he traveled before he went down in there. Three seconds right, violation on Kansas. So with 19.9 seconds to go, East Tennessee has it down two. I like what Allen's do, what Coach LaForce is doing here. He didn't call timeout and give them a chance to set up a special defense. He's letting them play. Seven seconds. Make it happen, young man. A foul against Adonis Jordan will send Jason Niblett to the line with two shots and 5.1 seconds left. You know, I don't want to sound like I'm sitting here being critical of the officials because I've been impressed with some calls that are real gutty calls they've made that have gone against Kansas here at the end. If I, I got to watch myself, I, I used to do that all the time and say, that's a travel, that's a foul. I, I, need to, I don't mean to be criticizing the officials, but I'm impressed with what they've done. You know, this, this is an intimidating crowd. Kansas calls timeout, and they get it. With 5.1 seconds left, we'll be back to Lawrence, Kansas, right after this. Well, here's the scenario. We got 5.1 seconds left, a two-point Kansas lead, and Jason Niblett at the free throw line. He's at one out of two from there in this game. Niblett's got 21. Niblett and Trezell Silvers, basically the two keys to this comeback. Well, you, you, everybody has contributed, but I will say those two guys have made awesome play after awesome play. This young man here, That was a big, big miss for Niblett. Yep. But I'll tell you what, without him, they wouldn't be in this position. So. One Niblett. point game, you gotta make a quick foul here. Gotta make a quick foul. And they did, that is. Now you got two shots because they, they've been over the, they're over the 10 limit, but he made that foul about as quickly as you could. 3.5 seconds left. It's a one point Kansas lead. Well, we saw Georgia Tech win one this afternoon by with two something with about two. Yeah. So maybe East Carolina, if they go behind here by three, that's the max they can go behind. Get it up before call timeout. Let Niblett knock in a three-pointer. We'll go into <laughs> overtime. 84-83. Adonis Jordan with two shots, an 89% foul shooter. He's at four out of five tonight. Got it. Two-point Kansas lead now. Jordan will get one more with three and a half seconds left. 
Gets quiet in here when they go to the line. He got a pair. Now East Tennessee wants time oh. with 3.5 to go. Oh. They're going to have to get a three to tie here. Which... Allen wanted him to get the ball to midcourt and call timeout. And the communi miscommunication there. So now then, it's really a difficult pass now to bring the basketball from the baseline. You can, you can do it within that time period. But to get off a great shot, I mean an open shot, is awfully difficult right now. The Buccaneers have one timeout left. What they might well, do is then, use that timeout here, get yeah, it to Hopefully midcourt. they will. If, if they have the one that I, I wasn't up, I wasn't staying up with the timeouts, Randy. But if they have that one up. All right. Okay. East Tennessee State has really done a tremendous job just to get back in this game. You know, at halftime, as we look at the three-point field goal leader. Yeah. Palmer, Palmer, seven for 12, 58 percent. Niblett, seven out of 14 for 50, and Trezell yeah. Silvers. Well, all three of those three guys have been doing it all year for them. All three of them are shooting over 50 percent. Silvers, before this game, was shooting over 80 percent. So the thing that, that East Carolina had to do, they were a little slow getting it started, but they wound up doing it. And that is stick that three-point shot. They're awfully good at it. I'd be surprised. If, I won't be surprised. It'd be interesting to see if East, if East Tennessee now doesn't bring the ball to midcourt, get another timeout. But maybe they have a play that will carry it all the way in uh, to shooting range. I don't know. The Bucks have to have a three to tie, and they've got only three and a half seconds to get it up the floor. Oh. There's the lob into Pelfrey. Pelfrey three, missed it, and that's a ball game. Well, yeah. boy, I tell you what, the Buccaneers did a tremendous job just being able to have a chance to tie or win this basketball game. And with the 440 to go in the contest, East Tennessee actually took a lead after being down by 23 points early in that first half of play. Just a tremendous effort and a great basketball game tonight, Norm. Well, they can hold their head high. There's no, there's no reason for them to drop their chins, and they're not. This has to be a confidence builder for them to come in here and play this well in, in, against a great basketball team in front of a tremendous crowd. Kansas came in ranked number two in the country, and they jumped out to a 22-0 lead led by as many as 23 in the first half and then held on to beat East Tennessee State 86-83. That's the final score, 86-83, Kansas. But a great basketball game. We'll be back to recap it for you in just a moment. <laughs> 